everyone, welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete, and today we're talking about, well, really just my top tips, I guess, for anyone looking to take their dog, to train their dog first, and then take their dog canoeing with them, whether it's just on a day trip or a two week long excursion. And uh, of course, it's gonna be different if your dog is well-trained or not well-trained, or if they're a really big dog or not a big dog, or perhaps a dog that's really into the water, like a Portuguese water dog or a retriever, or maybe a dog that's really not into water. So there's gonna be variables, but overall, um, I can give you some tips that I think will make your life a whole lot easier if you're just thinking about how to get your dog interested uh, and ready for canoeing. Okay, so I've just, did a bit of research today just mostly off the top of my head a little bit online but just a lot of experience over the years and um, uh, they're just kind of random tips all right so one of them is that it's helpful first of all if your dog is used to riding in a vehicle it's just helpful not only to get from from your house to the water but it kind of gives them an idea of being inside of a vessel I guess of some kind um, and uh, uh, you know the movement and, and that kind of thing so just anyway it's just helpful if they have some experience with a vehicle okay the next tip would be to bring some treats along some of this might seem obvious but uh, you'd be surprised how many things get missed there's there's quite a few tips so one of them is to just bring some uh, treats along to kind of uh, bribe them or lure them into the canoe um, also helpful to have their favorite stuffy toy or squeezy toy or whatever um, again it's, it works like a treat right it's like a lure to, to get them into the the canoe and it's not so, you know to show that it's not such a bad place to be it's also helpful to have like a, a, a towel or a fleece blanket or some people use like an anti-slip um, carpet or mat which is really nice if you can have one of those like a bath mat or something and um, that just helps them not feel so insecure and kind of sliding around on the bottom of a, a Kevlar or fiberglass canoe or, or aluminum with their you know, uh, uh, paws kind of sliding around or their, their nails scraping. So helpful to have one of those. Um, I just have uh, either a towel or the dog just uses my uh, gear that I had there if I'm going on a longer trip. So I don't worry too much about it, but if you're not bringing a lot of gear, then maybe something for him to, uh, uh, to lie down on would be helpful. All right, so the next tip that I really really like this one I've used this to with great success and, and that is to just practice the idea of a dog in a canoe maybe the first time on your lawn so just on your back in your backyard somewhere um, put the canoe down and um, you know put your blanket or your towel or whatever inside and then lure lure him I say him him her whatever you know what I mean uh, lure him into uh, the canoe with a bribe treat or something like that or a toy and then uh, once he's in, you, you can help him in if he's smaller. And then you can uh, slowly maybe rock the canoe back and forth a bit just to kind of give him a feel for what it's going to be like when, once he's out on the water. Okay, so if your dog is really into the water in general, I would strongly suggest that before you get into the canoe in an actual day trip or a longer trip, um, when you get to the water's edge, let your dog just go flying into the water and get that get that out of his system because if you don't he might want to do that more likely it is he's gonna to want to do that once he's in the canoe and that can be a problem um, if he's wanting to jump out and he's a big dog and you have a small canoe or it's just you know tightly packed it's just it can be bothersome uh, to a degree especially if he's doing it over and over again so maybe just try to get that out of his system as much as you can uh, before you actually begin the journey on the water okay this might sound like it's a Kind of a normal thing that everybody uh, has or, or would think of but not necessarily i'm talking about pfds all right personal flotation device as you know i'm a big advocate of that uh, obviously for people and it's 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 kind of the law it's not always the law to wear it but you need to at least have it but i like to wear it all the time anyway but what about animals well dogs of course i mean gosh you can uh you, most dogs especially if they're a particular type of breed but pretty much any breed um, can handle himself in, in the water but the thing is when you tip over if you tip over the last thing you want to deal with is a dog even though he can swim 
it can still be a bit of a challenge if he's struggling you know to, to, to get up onto some shoreline or the boat or something like this and you've got your own problems you've got your gear floating down the river or or you're far from shore and you got to try to get yourself back to shore safely with your canoe you don't need to worry about your dog so if you have a da -da -da, something like this uh, this is for my my dog uh, my dog's just a puppy and plus is it's it's not a, a big breed anyway and so um, a, a relatively inexpensive life jacket PFD for a dog is something that it may not be a hundred percent necessary but I would suggest having it anyway because it just gives you more peace of mind uh, in knowing that you don't have to give as much attention to a potentially drowning dog if you do flip over because with the dog's ability to swim plus with the PFD I, I think the dog is gonna be probably the least of your worries if he's got one on Okay, so the next tip is kind of related to the tip before, a couple before, which is to try to get energy out of the system of the dog. So one of the things that we do is we take our dogs for a walk. Now, we don't have a big breed, and plus our dogs are just puppies. And so we, we like to just kind of go for a walk around the block kind of thing, up and down the road. Uh, we live up in the country, so the block's too big. But you know what I mean, right? Just try to, try to get energy out, and then... Um, after like about uh, with our dogs after about 10 or 15 minutes of walking all they want to do is have you carry them and so if you put them in a canoe at that point they're probably just gonna flop down on uh, a blanket and they may even have a nap so anyway just a, a tip it may seem obvious it may seem like common sense but maybe write down all my tips uh, and uh, once you see them all in front of you you'll realize that probably you didn't know at least one or two or more of them all right so here's a, a pretty important tip it's really helpful if your dog has some obedience skills. Um, at least, especially if your dog is larger, I have seen this be a problem, not a serious problem, but an issue, and that is that if the dog doesn't wait for you to say, okay, in or out, then what'll happen is if you approach the shore, the dog will probably be waiting to jump out, especially if he's a younger dog, He'll, uh, or like a hyper, like, like, you know, a Jack Russell Terrier, crazy. So he's going to go flying out of the canoe before you even get to the edge. He'll be the first one on land. Um, you're still in the canoe. You can't do anything to restrain him. And there may be other people there. It could be like a, if it's a public dock or something like that. And depending on the type of dog you have, he could be uh, quite a scare for maybe children or just uh, cause ruckus and disruption with maybe um, you know a fisherman with his tackle box on the day. You know what I mean, right? So you want to keep him away from disrupting other people. So it's helpful if you're the first one out and the dog waits for your instruction to jump out, or if it's a small breed at that point, he's at least waiting for you and you can maybe pick him up and take him out. All right, so I would recommend bringing a dish like this. This is just a little Tupperware. It could just be like a sour cream container or you know something a little more substantial whatever you know the size of your dog um, to actually scoop water for your dog to drink in the canoe I have experienced a big dog in my canoe desperately wanting to get a drink of water it's not like it's impossible but it's just a little bit awkward so it just life is much easier with a container of water for the dog to drink Okay, so another recommendation that I have would be to have a dry bag like this. It's a small one, it's about 10 liters, and it's perfect for just stuff you would use for the day, like maybe some camera equipment, but for sure like a bottle of water or a sandwich or something like that. You don't want a wet, dripping dog to connect with your food or anything else that you have. So I would bring a dry bag just because it really keeps everything dry. And then as a best practice, I would put the bag, in my case, I'd put it behind me and I would put the dog in front of me just to make sure they're well separated. Again, just as a matter of best practice. Okay, so one of the things that we definitely have done is to introduce our dogs to water well before we consider taking them out on a canoe trip. And so uh, we have a pool and we've taken advantage of it by uh, just gently putting them in uh, into the water without throwing them in or being aggressive at all because we want them to enjoy the experience so we've been able to do that 
on a number of occasions and uh, both with and without a life jacket and they're fine with it either way. They don't struggle to try to get out. They don't panic even though um, they're really not a, a tough big water type breed. We even have one little Bichon. It's not a very tough rugged. My kids always bug me but you know you're supposed to be a rugged outdoors guide. A Bichon is not exactly a rugged dog. Well no it's not. Okay next tip not always necessary but I think it's a really really good idea to just bring a leash along. You never know what you're going to be doing during the trip where you're going to be disembarking necessarily. It's just helpful to have some restraining ability. Um, as I mentioned earlier if the dog jumps out and you're not out it's it's helpful to have it on a leash so he's not causing any any problems but um, when you are in the canoe with the dog I would suggest that you don't attach the leash to anything. Um, that can only serve to cause problems should you capsize and uh, you're trying to get to shore. It could be a bit of an issue if you've got your dog tied up to the canoe and the canoe is uh, you know in a bad place right. So don't tie him up with a leash while you're in the canoe. Alright next tip. I do this all the time anyway but I would be especially conscious of this when I'm with my dog and that is that I just simply stay close to shore. I generally stay anywhere from 15 to maybe as much as 50 feet from shore depending on the situation and it's just a, not a bad idea for safety all around. Um, you can get to shore a lot quicker if you're to capsize or if it gets dangerous at all the, the wind starts to pick up or whatever the reason is or the weather starts getting bad it's rainy or whatever it's just quicker to just get to shore if you're closer to it plus you can enjoy the scenery more. Uh, there's not a lot of great scenery if you're stuck in the middle of an ocean for example. Uh, to me that's kind of a little scary because where am I going to get to land if I need to if there's an emergency. So I just like sticking near shore and when you have a dog it's so much the better because the dog can be amused and, and entertained by um, or occupied by what's going on on the shore like squirrels or other animals uh, as you can be as well and, uh, and you're safer all around. So it's just a good idea as much as you can do that. If you are on a longer trip like a couple of days to a couple of weeks I would uh, strongly suggest that you have a first aid kit specifically for animals or for dogs with like a waterproof tape and uh, maybe some just specific things meant uh, for a canine. If not at least a decent well equipped first aid kit that may well come in handy. We had an issue happen uh, years ago with one of our dogs in the canoe while I was fishing. Um, caught a fish. He hadn't really seen a fish in real life. The fish started flapping around and of course the dog went ballistic and it wasn't the fish that caused any problems specifically it was the, the hooks on all my lures where the dog launched his body into my tackle box and um, there was minor injuries there was some blood and uh, we had a first aid kit. So anyways it, it uh, sometimes it's necessary to have a first aid kit if only because you now have a dog with you that doesn't understand English very well and so there can be problems. Of course this should go without saying but do your best to keep your canoe as balanced as possible. Um, just kind of you know make it feel as steady as a craft like a canoe can feel and that will enhance everybody's enjoyment of your outing. The other thing is you really want to make sure you have the appropriate canoe. Canoes come in all sorts. Um, long thin solo canoes which is kind of what I use and it's not really what I would suggest except that I really like my solo canoe but if you can if it's a if it's a priority for you to go out with say a big dog or maybe even a couple of big dogs and a partner well you'll definitely want a tandem canoe I would suggest oh, at minimum 16 feet but I would say bigger is better even 17 or 18 feet and I would get I hesitate to say this because it depends if you're going on a longer trip you don't want to follow this rule but generally speaking for the sake of the enjoyment of the dogs I would suggest getting as, as wide a canoe with as flat a bottom as you can get and maybe even with a keel on it a keel line a ridge to, to keep it to give it even more sturdiness or steadiness just because. 
you want it to be as steady and sturdy as possible. The beam, the width at the widest part, I would suggest be at least 35 inches. You can get 36, 37 inches. That would be a good a good starting point if you have at least one large dog, like a, a, a lab retriever or a golden or something like that. And especially if you have two, which a lot of people have, and then certainly if you throw in a partner, you're gonna need something that big with all your gear and your dogs. All right, you stuck with me this far and I appreciate that. I just have one more thing to say to you regarding this whole topic of your dogs um, with you in a canoe, and that is that most of these tips, actually pretty much all of the tips that I've just given you are especially important if your dog is big. First of all, if your dog is big, but also if you have two big dogs, even more so, all right? If you have a smaller breed like, like I do, and especially if they're puppies and, and whatnot, it, it's almost like they don't exist, but you could probably um, uh, benefit from most of the tips. Anyway, I would treat them the same way as a larger dog. I would follow the same rules and, you know, getting, getting them used to the canoe and all that stuff that I talked about, but, but um, I just, the bottom line is if they're big dogs, put more emphasis on that. The more emphasis on being trained properly to wait for your instruction to get out of the canoe. More emphasis on making sure you have a leash so you don't want them to disembark without you and then uh, maybe cause some issues. Um, I've seen that happen, trust me. So anyway. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on this particular video about how to get your dogs ready for canoeing. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it and that you've gleaned something from it. I enjoy making these videos for sure. I still don't make any money on YouTube or my blog, but you know what? Maybe one day I will, and I do appreciate um, you checking this out. Actually, if you give me a like and a subscribe, YouTube likes that, so maybe one day I will make money. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you in advance. Um, if you check out our blog, we've got a lot of articles that complement many of our videos and we also have a whole lot more information that I don't deal with on any of my videos here on YouTube and so uh, you know if you want to really really take a deep dive into paddling in general but canoeing specifically then you want to check out our blog ruggedoutdoorsguide.com guys until the next time I see you get out there enjoy God's creation and keep on looking up